So, in the first of a series of short videos, I'm going to take you through the process of performing climate-based daylight modelling using Radiance IES within the IESVE suite. Okay, so I've opened IESVE. Um, the version I've got uh, at the moment is 2015. Um, although I have been using 2016 recently and there are one or two improvements um, but we'll run with 2015 for the moment in this video um, I'm not going to talk you through how to create geometry or how to import geometry in this video I'm just going to get you started with simulation and um, geometry creation is covered in other sessions and other videos okay so um, just first, a very, very brief background to Radiance. So Radiance is a software package that was developed at the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in California uh, by the Lighting Systems Research Group. And it's a tool for predicting daylighting, predicting the visible radiation in daylit spaces. Um, and IES has their own integrated version of Radiance, which they call Radiance IES. And um, as you might be familiar, uh, other other um, sorry other software packages also use Radiance. Uh, Radiance has been validated and proven to give pretty accurate daylighting uh, simulation results. Okay, so let's get straight in. Um, I'm starting with a model and what you can see on screen is I've got a very simple model of a few rooms here um, and I've got four rooms with a corridor and these rooms have windows. Uh, very basic, simple model um, but that's just where we're going to start from. Okay, first thing that you need to be sure about is that you have the correct location. Obviously we're using weather files and if you've not got the right location for your project you're going to get odd results. So if we look in the bottom left hand corner, sorry bottom right hand corner, we can see that our location is set. If we double click on that, um, this brings you into a window with uh, various parameters about the climate data that you've got. You can actually interrogate that data, have a look at that. Okay, so various um, different ways of looking at the data that you'll be using in your simulation. I'm not going to go into that in detail, but have a look at that. Okay, if you want to change your location, you can also use the wizard here. Clicking on that wizard will take you into a, a site location dialog box and you can pick your location from anywhere in the world, anywhere that has weather files anyway. But we're not gonna do that now, we're just gonna get straight on with some simulation. Okay, here's our model. Um, along the top we've got a few basic ways of viewing, axonometric, plan, right, back, um, okay but I'm not going to go into those in the mo for the time being and we've also got the button here top right which is the model viewer 2, if we just click on that get another way of viewing the model which is just opening um, now as you'll see when it eventually opens it's not a very sophisticated viewer and um, I, I think you know really it, it probably comes from a time uh, before we had rather more sophisticated software and um, if we think, if we go back to the days when Ecotech 
was, was kind of new. Um, a lot of the CAD software didn't really have three-dimensional viewing um, windows like this. Uh, I think, you know, when you're familiar with more sophisticated packages, this looks rather kind of odd. I would have to say that they have a sort of mix of very basic geometry modelling, as you can see in the blue, combined with kind of photorealistic sky. I just find it's a, a rather an odd thing. But, you know, feel free to play around with that. Um, you know, you, you may find it useful. As you'd expect, there's all different ways of, um, of, of viewing your model. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you, if you play around, you, you can find uh, a kind of, you probably find a sort of reasonable way of viewing that geometry if you wanted. Okay, but I'm not going to dwell on that here. I'm just going to close that now. Okay, back into IES. So, let's have a little look now. First of all, you need to open the Radiance IES application. Come over to the left, make sure you can see applications. Scroll down, click on Radiance IES. And not a lot really happened there, but what you might notice is we've now got some more dialog boxes along the bottom. And we're going to dive straight in and start to have a look at some of the options here. Now, I'm not going to talk you through all of this because I want to focus on climate-based daylight modeling and this is represented within these windows here dynamic simulation which still says beta after I'm not quite sure why um, 2016 version still says beta and working plane grid beta so these really are the two um, tabs that you'll be concerned with um, when you're looking at climate-based daylighting. And okay. Now, going under the WP grid, working plane grid tab, and um, under files here, this is telling me that I've actually already got some simulation results. Now, what I'm gonna do is double click on that and um, let's just delete it. Let's start with an empty, uh, empty set of files, no simulation yet conducted. Okay, now we've got four rooms here, or, or five I suppose. Now um, you can simulate more than one room at a time, but what I'd recommend is you simulate a single room at a time. Um, Climate-based daylight modeling does take quite a while to simulate because it's simulating many, many hours throughout the year. So I think to make things easier, I would just start with one room at a time. When you've got no room selected and you go to the dynamic simulation tab, everything's grayed out because you're not told, ah uh, yes, which room want to simulate. So I'm just going to click on that room, click on this one here, and now you can see that my um, options are highlighted. Okay, let's start with, let's go into simulation options first of all. And we've got some options here. Okay, first thing, working plane. What height within your room what height do you want to measure the daylight? Normally, we take a working plane, which is about desk height, which is about 0.85 meters above floor level in a room. Um, by default, that's what Radiance IES will set for you. You can change that. Um, you can put that working plane anywhere you like. Um, but normally, when we're looking at climate-based daylight modeling, we leave it at the 
sort of desk height of 0.85. Okay, grid size, how close or how far apart are they? do you want your sensor points to be? So what we're effectively doing is we're on that working plane, we're going to put an array of sensor points, which as you imagine, kind of in the real world, in the physical world, would be like having a whole range of light meters positioned on a grid, sort of on tripods at 0.85 meters above the floor. By default, this is set at 0.5 of a meter, um, which is a pretty reasonable spacing, I think. And normally you can just leave it at 0.5. Um, it will slow down the simulation if you put those points closer together, and you can end up with a confusion of just too many points. So for now, let's leave it at 0.5. Okay, next tab, maintenance factor. So talking about the glass, um, glass um, does, does reduce the amount of light that's transmitted through it. Um, you get reflection, you, you might have dirt on the glass, the glass itself absorbs some light. Um, and you can customize these maintenance factors if you know the, um, the, the, the real figures for your building. Otherwise, IES will use some default values which are quite reasonable. So you may find you just want to leave that alone. Next one, AOI, area of interest. So in many simulations, we're not quite so concerned with the strip in the room around the edges because commonly the edges of a room we probably don't work in them you probably have circulation or furniture so it's quite normal to leave the uh, the, the strip which is about 0.5 meters wide and just not to be concerned with that um, in our simulations so uh, you can set that, the default will come in at 0.5, but you can change that if you want. Okay, next one. Ground reflectance. So, in the simulation, imagine we are um, simulating the effect of, of light, daylight, bouncing around outside the building before it um, is incident on the working plane within your room. So we need to know what the kind of reflectance of the outside ground is. Again, IES will put a reasonable default value in, um, which is quite appropriate for urban settings. But you would want to change it if you were, um, I don't know, let's say modelling uh, in the countryside perhaps, or in a desert with very reflective surfaces then you could change this. Or if you want it to be more sophisticated, you would actually model those environmental and external surfaces. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that alone. Click OK. Okay, so we're nearly ready to start running a simulation. And before we do that, final thing is, what is your time scale for simulation? And You've got options. You can run a full year, so every day in the year. Um, holiday profile, where you have to set this elsewhere in IES, where you could have weeks of the year, let's say, where nobody works, or even days of the week when nobody works. Um, to be honest, you don't wouldn't normally need to change that unless it was a building um, with specific periods that would that were definitely not in use. Um, you can set weekdays only, um, which you might think makes a lot of sense for offices, school buildings. Um, in reality, um, within your weather data sets, there's unlikely to be big differences between a weekday and a weekend. And um, it's quite common actually just to simulate all the days. 
Um, the way Radiance IES works is you run the simulation first and then you an analyze the data afterwards. So often um, it's kind of preferable just to simulate all the days. You can always disregard some of those days later. You can monthly, you can use monthly design days where you just take a, a, a sample day from each month. You can customize that or weekly where you take one day a week. Um, <clears throat> with climate-based daylight modeling, to be honest, now that we, we are um, engaging with a, a much more complex type of simulation, um, we normally just simulate the full 365 days but you know for speed purposes it, you might have occasions when you don't want to do that I'm going to set that on 365 days okay so we're now actually ready to run the simulation so I'll, I'll click run the simulation um, yeah it's just warning me that I've already saved a simulation result file you can overwrite it or it will back up um, the file you've already got. So I'll click on no and it will, it will do me a backup. It will save me a backup. Okay, so the simulation starts and it will probably take anything up to an hour um, for this room. Um, probably, probably slightly less to be honest. Um, now, what Radiance needs to do at first is to um, calculate the daylight coefficients. Now, I'm not going to get into the detail of that, but in kind of simple terms, what it's doing is it's doing some uh, kind of analysis of the environment and of the geometry of the space. And um, it works all that out up front, and then it will apply that across um, all the different times of the year that we are simulating. So I'm not going to keep the video running while it does it, but what you'll see is once um, it's finished doing that simulation part, it, this, this window here will change and you'll start to see um, a summary of day by day and hour by hour that the simulation is running. Okay, so I'll stop the video there and um, the next video we'll have some results to start to analyze.